हेलो गाइस वेलकम टू अवर थिंग मैथलियर जी वेलकम टू द नेक्स्ट वीडियो हेलो गाइस वेलकम टू अवर थिंग मैथलियर जी सो आई होप एवरी वन ऑफ यू हैव परफॉर्म वेरी वेल इन गेट 2021 सो वी हैव कलेक्टेड प्लेंटी ऑफ क्वेश्चंस सो इन दिस वीडियो एंड यू नो डिफरेंट पार्ट्स आर कमिंग इन द नेक्स्ट फ्यू डेज विल डिस्कस अबाउट the questions and remember all these questions are memory based okay these are not the exact questions definitely we'll bring out the complete solutions once we get the response sheets so as of now we'll uh, discuss about the memory based questions in the different videos so let's get started so the first question is asked about ferrite stabilizer so basically they gave different uh, options okay and they asked to pick up ferrite stabilizer the options was uh, silicon nickel manganese and carbon okay so which is the ferrite stabilizer so basically we have ferrite stabilizers and austenite stabilizers right so nickel manganese carbon are austenite stabilizers so your answer is silicon okay silicon will be your ferrite stabilizer The next question, uh, they asked about a simple oxidation sequence. Okay, so they asked about the oxidation sequence, which we have already previously discussed in many of our videos and the full course that I uh, made on steel making two years back. Okay, so what is the sequence? So many of you know silicon, manganese, carbon, and phosphorus. Okay, so this is the order. okay in which the oxidation sequence so that uh, how did we get to this basically from ellingham diagram you can easily arrive at it okay so silicon is the first element to get oxidized so in oxidation sequence they asked which is the first element to get oxidized so what is the answer the answer will be silicon so interestingly in the options also you have all these four options right so from there you can easily uh, see it and choose silicon to be the answer the next question was about a uh, center split so usually what they did was they just gave different images in the options and you need to choose which one is center split so here people usually confuse about center split and alligator ring so how a center split defect look like so usually let's say this is my you know plane or the roller i mean uh, the rolled sheet this is basically the center split okay so this is the top view okay remember this is the top view which i am showing you okay so the sheet is actually you know uh, separates out uh, this is also called as a zipper crack you see this this is looking something like a zip it is just open like a zip right so it is called as center split or a zipper crack and again this is the top view right now what happens is if uh let's say this is the thickness so along the thickness if you actually split it something like this this is alligator ring okay so i hope uh, you understood the difference between the both alligator ring and center split okay this is a side view actually okay and this is the top view so the splitting is different in both these cases right so this is splitting along my you know half of the thickness whereas this is actually splitting along the width okay width or breadth of the sheet so this is one more interesting question which they gave and uh, this is where people uh, you know there is a chance usually to get trapped between alligator ring and the center split okay the next question was about creep so what they gave is they gave different uh, sentences and uh, they asked to pick out the false statement okay so what are the questions what are the options the first option is they said that the minimum creep rate minimum creep rate is in the primary creep okay primary creep the second option the gave is that the nabarro herring creep is actually based on the bulk diffusion bulk or lattice diffusion which is correct 
the next option is regarding cobalt creep okay so cobalt creep basically is involving what grain boundary diffusion and also the last option they gave about the size they gave that fine grain size okay fine grains have less creep resistance so out of these four they ask to pick out the incorrect one or the false statement so here you can directly see the first option is the wrong one why because if you remember the creep curve okay so this is the creep rate and this is time you have something like this correct so if you see this is where you see that the secondary state so this is primary this is secondary and this is tertiary creep right so secondary is where the slope is almost constant okay this is strain versus time and uh, the slope is what strain rate and strain rate is basically the minimum strain rate which you see in the secondary creep or the secondary stage of creep is my creep rate is considered to be the creep rate so that is a false statement the second option nabero herring creep absolutely it involves lattice diffusion or bulk diffusion cobalt creep also is due to grain boundary diffusion and the final option is about fine grains and uh, fine grains have less creep resistance yes it is also correct why because finer the grain sizes the grain boundary area increases that is why usually coarse grains have good creep resistance okay so the first option is the answer the next question over here is an interesting question and an easy question from material balance okay which uh, you know we made various videos previously material balance so what uh, they are asking here is they are asking to find out the weight of ore required and the weight of slag and what are the given values so the given values are that we have um, an ore con which is consisting of 80 percentage of fe2o3 and 20 percentage gang okay this is the ore and they also mentioned that we use 600 kg per ton of hot metal coke okay this is the coke rate used and also coke contains 85 percentage carbon and rest 15 percentage is ash okay also they gave that the composition of hot metal is 95.5 percentage iron okay these are the given parameters and you need to calculate what the weight of ore and the weight of slag so which is very easy so what we used to do basically for iron ore weight we basically perform iron balance simple that means iron in the input what is the input fe input is what only ore and what is the output it is only hot metal so that's it just do this material balance and you are get to go you are good to go with the answer so here let's assume that x kg is the weight of ore into what is the percentage of iron ore which is 80 so i am writing it in fraction 0.8 into what is the mass fraction so from fe203 also we need to take only fe so that is what 112 by 160 okay so if someone is not actually understanding these numbers you really need to focus on material balance do watch the other videos which are present in the video uh, channel okay this is equal to what this is equal to 95.5 percentage of hot metal and again they gave that all these calculations are based on what on one ton calculations and there is no iron also going into the slag okay so here what we did we assumed that x is the weight of ore 0 0.8 because we have 80 percent of iron ore in the ore sorry fe2o3 in the ore and what is this 112 by 160 this guy is the mass fraction of iron present in iron ore and this is the whole input and the output is only my hot metal which is 95.5 percentage so on performing the simple calculation you get x to be 17.5 kg therefore what is this x what is this this is nothing but the weight of ore that we have assumed right so simply you got 17.5 kg now what is the other thing weight of slag now you need to be a bit careful why because 
here there is no you know different uh, components of slag you don't have particular sao2 or cao or something you only have two things to be considered number one is the gang content which is 20 percentage and you have 15 percentage ash if i'm not wrong they also mentioned that the slag is generated from these two guys the gang from the ore and the ash content from the coke okay so it is pretty much easy right so we know what is the total weight of coke used and we know what is the total weight of ore used and we know the percentages that is contributing to my weight of slag therefore what will be the weight of slag weight of slag will be the amount of gang okay obviously because this is what are the impurities which are needed to be removed out so amount of gang plus amount of ash in coke correct so what is the amount of gang so if you carefully see we have 20 percentage so 20 by 100 into total weight of 4 which we just calculated which is 1705 plus this is 15 percentage into how much because we are uh, assuming that the hot metal is 1000 kg or 110 this is 1000 that's it oh sorry because we are assuming that the hot metal is 1000 kg then the coke is what 600 right because this guy ash is coming from the coke therefore that's why i multiplied by the weight of coke and on performing this you get this approximately to be 431 point something 431 kg so the weight of ore is 1705 and the weight of slag is how much 431 so pretty much simple right so just doing an iron balance to get the weight of iron ore and for using that iron ore you need to calculate the amount of gang and obviously from coke you can directly calculate the 15 percentage ash and both of them contributing towards the slag therefore 431 kg is the weight of slag okay so these are some basic questions which we have so we have various parts coming in so do subscribe and also share these videos to all the people who are interested and they already wrote gate 2021 right so do stay tuned to our channel everything metallurgy and thanks a lot for surpassing our channel to 4500 subscribers so we are very glad that our videos are very very helpful and uh, you know many people are actually uh, mailing us saying that how these 100 days 100 concepts are actually helped them in their gate preparation so thanks a lot for your love also do visit everythingmetallurgy.com if you want to prepare for gate 2022 and enroll for the live classes or the video courses which are already being started so that's it from my side we'll meet you again in the next part which is releasing soon so stay tuned guys